Because you know why? Is it? You know why? Because you, know you know why? Why? Because like uh, I hate. I, I, I look. I've said a lot of mean things about the Paul brothers. Yeah. I'm just gonna go on record right now. They are fucking killing it right now. Just Dude, as people, brilliant. yeah, just as people like making moves. I am so fucking deeply impressed with how they've pivoted from being two of the most hated people on the planet to winning everybody over. Like, uh, not everybody, but winning people over just by how they're kind of twist. I don't know. Dude, first <laughs> things first. First things first, they're bad people. They did a lot of terrible things for, for money. They exploited suicide. They did all kinds of awful shit. They are bad people. Flow, flow, flew across the country. Yeah, to exploit suicide. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I'm really enjoying the trajectory they're on right now. Just because, yeah. the, dude, the Dana White, Logan Paul saga is fucking dope. It is yeah. like one of my favorite beefs ever. Just because they are both no holds barred because they both have so much nasty money. But here's the thing, though. Like, uh, I mean, I can't we can believe I started this off praising no, but this. Fine, but we, we talk about people are allowed to change all the time, Joel. That's true. We, That's true. We just establish that they're bad people. Who know? We don't know them. And <laughs> I've seen did not, where, they did not change. And apparently, when they're like, when that, when that, when the suicide um, uh, controversy is brought up, they're like pretty woeful about it like you know like hey that was a big mistake like they're not like oh that was like they take it very serious and like hey that was a big mistake so <laughs> it anyway. was the biggest fucking mistake bro life i could not he Dude. was wearing a, a toy story hat <laughs> damn I mean, dude I didn't, I didn't see it, it. But I believe you. Remember, you see all this? All right, anyways, hey guys, hey, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of I Didn't See It, but I Believe You. I'm Doug, I'm Joel, and this is episode 136. If you're keeping track, this is the 136 episode of the podcast. Congratulations <laughs> for making it this far. We're so glad to have you. And if you uh, have been here the long way, remember when Joel used to be obsessed with whatever number we were on and try to compare it to something of. of- <laughs> Whatever. Remember that? That, does, cool. that doesn't really work after you get past numbers that are people's possible ages. Like, like, what would you say though? You're like four, as in four friends in a barn. You would say something. No, no, it was like it was about milestones. So like oh. I, so I don't even know if I really started dropping until I was like 16 and we can drive now. And then like 18, <laughs> we can buy cigarettes. The podcast can smoke now. Then 21, we can fucking vote or whatever. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. Drink. Drink. You can vote at 18. Sorry, America. I didn't mean to oh, Anybody, uh, Men can vote at 18. Women can't vote, I think, right? Suicide's not uh, something to be joked joke about. And, uh, yeah, Logan any, Paul. Uh, you feeling any any weird feelings or like you know like like your own stuff? Uh, please uh, reach out to the hotlines and your yeah, family. for sure, Make sure for sure. Out. Um, man, I you know I kind of feel like I kind of feel like I kind of feel like dude. We were talking about something earlier. Oh, thread counts some shirts. Oh yeah. Oh, I have to say, I love this shirt. I'm I'm wearing another one of my Ruckin' Fottens. This is the Hackers, uh, the variant. It just, I don't really enjoy the colors it's bringing out on my skin, though. Yeah, I don't dude. really know if I look great in it. I look really pale. Your skin is technically colored. Colored? Colors? What? I don't know. That, that did not sound right at all. Your skin has color. Thank you. But at the same time, you do not go out in the sun whatsoever. I do though. Hey, hold on one second. Where are you going? All right. Hey, Joel's always been pale. I guess one time, one time he there was a summer where Joel definitely hung out by a pool a lot, and then he did have some weird tanning tanning going on. I don't know if it. Was, I guess Joel does look better with pale. I'm not sure how to put this. His teeth look good, though. His teeth come a long way. His hair, too. He says he has abs. I'm back, boys! <laughs> For those just listening, Joel just ran away just <sighs> put on a sweater. Were you cold? Was no, you- I just look way better now. Oh, okay. That's a great shirt, but you know what? I think I might uh I might not be the guy for it anymore. I never noticed because I only I mostly wore it during quarantine in 2020 when I got it, and then it hasn't really been cold enough to rock it here most of the time. Um it's cold down here right now. 
it's fucking freezing here, dude. What? Let's spend, let's spend time talking about the weather. Hey, again. hey, again. Texas, you want to talk about the weather? Just kidding. We're not fucking going to. Anyway, I look a lot better now. If you're only listening, I threw on a golden mink coat. It's made of uh, faux mammoth hair. Whatever happened to him trying to recreate the mammoth? Remember when that was like a big thing? It's always like cloning the mammoth. Wait, well, we really? walked in with the mammoth. Yeah. They were going to clone a mammoth? Yeah. They've like found like one that was like perfectly preserved. Well, I are extremely pre- uh, preserved extremely well. So I don't want to go against the narrative of this podcast. I just never have heard that. But so what I see is that I am the one who is. <laughs> You don't, want to go against, you don't want to go against the narrative of the podcast. How many times do I not believe you on this fucking show? Almost every episode. But yeah. see, that's the difference between you and me. I build my house on the rocks. You build your house on the sand. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Here we go. Cloning of mammals has improved in the last two decades, but no viable mammoth tissue or its intact genome has been found to attempt cloning. Cloning. So I Clone. guess they have they can't find one. Oh, okay. They My can't bad. find viable tissue for the mammoth. That well, here, sucks. Have a tissue. They're the going to mis- try to grow an artificial womb, but the best they can do is a hybrid elephant with some woolly mammoth traits. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> okay. And then oh, that's sad as fuck. Yeah, I don't even see all this shit. The pictures to this are wild. Do not just <laughs> Google mammoth cloning if you're not trying to see dead elephants. If you want. Uh, but- yeah, you want womb. That's I, I see that meme with the porn, porn, porn stars, <laughs> porn stars, uh, artificial womb. Yeah, best we can do is uh, small hybrid elephant. elephant. With hybrid <laughs> elephant. Hybrid elephant with with some woolly mammoth traits. <laughs> Dude, could you like, imagine like if that's that, how good? No, no, no. The freaking elephant's born. You're like, oh, it's like it looks like a regular elephant. And they're like, where are the woolly mammoth traits? And it just starts instead of like, being like it just starts talking like uh, Ray Romano. Oh, God. Oh, God. Are you, like, in a text thread with me? And, uh, was that me and you who was talking about? Who was I just talking to about Ray Romano and Ice Age? Not me. <laughs> Not me. No, we did. We talked about it last week on the podcast, didn't we, about how no, there was we, a new Ice Age? The only time we've ever talked about Ray Romano on here is when we had that fender on Mooseport. <laughs> Why is this coming up? We, have, we even have an episode <laughs> named Mooseport. <laughs> oh, God. Welcome to Mooseport. Yeah, we should bring that back. Let's have another Mooseport episode. You guys want to have a Mooseport? Port day is that was that, yeah is that the movie that made gene hackman quit acting yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so we'll definitely yeah. okay yeah okay so here's the thing <laughs> here's the thing i'm gonna do because i think this is a great idea i'll do a welcome to Mooseport breakdown and post it on the channel we'll look at all the best parts of welcome to Mooseport. welcome to another segment on i didn't see it believe you called i believe it when i see it <laughs> and it's this episode welcome to Mooseport. uh <laughs> Yeah, that'd be awesome if you had an elephant that talked like Ray Romano. I didn't mean to lose that joke. That was a good joke. That was a good joke. We'll put it on the t-shirt or like on a cup. <laughs> hey, guys, by the way, I'm making merch right now for the show, and it's all really fucking stupid. So I need to know uh, how stupid do you guys want to wear? Like, I mean, how, how stupid, stupid are you know? willing to go? How insane that you're liking our show? Like, how stupid can I get here? Yeah, let's find uh, out. None of it's funny. It's well, just all be- very deeply dumb. Full disclosure, I have not seen any of it. <laughs> and you likely never will. I'll probably just list it and never tell you. What the fuck? <laughs> it's best to circumvent you. I can see you in this hash just out right now. What are you going to do with the money if you make it? Oh, no, there's not going to work at selling you. I just mean I'm going to list it without telling you. Uh, no, no, no. So actually, here's some inside baseball on the podcast for everybody uh, who wonders, how do we get this done <laughs> behind the scenes? I uh, I make the thumbnails after we get off uh, sexually, and then I send them to Doug. Uh, and. And yeah, I text them to Doug and he sends back the laughing emoji and then they go on YouTube. And two weeks ago, we talked a lot about sperm whales. And I was like, oh, I I was like, oh, I fucking got this, dude. (laughs) So I sat down and I found a really nice detailed picture of sperm in an in an egg. Where are they at? They're just in the body. swimming to. They're in the girl's urethra. Where is that called? uh, I don't don't know. See, I don't want to say the wrong word. The vaginal canal. Okay, this this is the, the, the it's a bunch of sperm swimming, you know, through the vagina or whatever. 
And uh, I mean, dude, I never said this was going to be a TED talk on sexuality. It's just about a, a thumbnail. So there's a bunch of sperm f- trying to get to the egg. And I put my face on one. I put Doug's face on one. And I put a couple of sperm whales in there, too. Just kind of swimming around. And then Jean-Claude Van Damme was in there. And then I had a, a sperm whale tail coming out of the vagina. You know like called? A, the tail? A fluke. Oh, yeah. So I had the fluke coming out of there, too. And I sent it to Doug and he sent me the first ever in the history of I didn't see it, but I believe you YouTube thumbnails veto. He used his veto power (laughs) on that thumbnail and said, I literally can't post this. I physically can't make myself post this. (laughs) And I fought for it with one text message. And he said, I can't do it. (laughs) So I showed my wife. That's what you said. It is scientific. And so I showed my wife and she too said, don't put that on the internet. And so my girlfriend and she's like, (laughs) that she's like, you can't put, she's like, don't put that on there. So what I'm, it was the grossest thumbnail you've ever made. And also one of the grossest pictures I've ever seen. And then all (laughs) there was like ribs, like ridges in the, of the body. It was way too detailed. All the things that you think that we're getting trouble for on this show and everything are the things that, that you like, <laughs> that's what you sent me. And then that's the second time. The first one is in our Halloween episode when you what sent did me I do? Thumb, you sent me that thumbnail. We talked about uh Halloween <clears throat> the movie with Jamie Lee Curtis almost the whole entire time. And then you, you sent me a post of Nightmare for Christmas with her heads on it. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Doing? Oh yeah. Well that was different just because like I wasn't thinking on that. We mentioned the movie at the very end of the podcast that I was like, oh got it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh the Halloween ones are not my favorite because the first one kills. The one where it's my head on the porch and you're smiling holding the crowbar, that one kills. But then I tried to do a sequel to it. And have me as the killer and you hiding, but it just didn't work. It didn't work. So I apologize. But I say all that about the sperm whale to say <laughs> that there is going to be a shirt with that on there. So uh, if you want to, if you want to have a picture of Doug swimming in the sperm on a shirt, you so will. inside the big sperm whale's big old head, that's head. all. Phil, Phil, head filled with the most precious of all sp- uh, sperm, most precious of all <laughs> whale oils, and it's called spermaceti. Because it all, because it looks I like. I know about this, big, actually. Big, cause I told you about it on the oh, episode shit. of our show. That's right. That's right. Hey, Ed. It's Barbacetti. And they used to um, freaking. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. No, no, please. <laughs> no, that's it. They, <laughs> they, they, send, they would carve a hole and they get it all out and they get the last bits. They would send like the lowest on the tone pole in the boat into the head cavity to scoop the rest of it out. It's disgusting. Uh, I Do you know what ambergris is? Or I mean, ambergris? Really. Ambergris, yeah, I do. Uh, I mean, I know what it is, um, and I only know what it is because there's the Bob's Burgers. That's the only entire Bob's Burgers episode about it, and they sing about it even. But in case you don't watch Bob's Burgers, yeah, I figured you would. If you don't watch Bob's Burgers, it's a solid, waxy substance originating in the intestines of the sperm whale, and it's used for medicines and potions in and spice in European culture or in Eastern culture, and uh, in the West, it was perfume. It's it still is used for perfume sometimes. It's like uh, it, what helps it adhere to your skin. Oh yeah, I figured it was still used. Is it is it not? Oh shit, ambergris has been used for more than just perfume. However, due to accessibility and cost, synthetic chemicals have now replaced it in all but the most expensive. It's it's more valuable than gold. No shit. Yep. And also, like the thing is, like the thing about ambergris that doesn't necessarily. I always thought it was ambergris because I always thought felt like it was French, but it is ambergris, I suppose. But um. I mean, I, thought, I was just guessing. I have no I, idea. No, no. It's it's called ambergris. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So, um, the thing about it is, yeah, it's a, a really brutal way. Like that's like one of the things they actually chopped up the intestines for to get the big coagulations and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But sometimes they like just like get loose and they poop them out or pee them out, or whatever they do with them. I guess poop them out in the wash ashore. And sometimes some like old dude just walking around, just you know, enjoying the beach, it comes across this huge rock of ambergris and next thing you know he's like has a small fortune it's yeah that's so dope do they have blowholes the what the wells yeah wells have blowholes maybe they just shoot it out there <clears throat> like imagine like when you get a rock in your straw and you're drinking water and a little rock gets in your straw so you have to suck the rock out oh, and then all of a God. sudden all the oh, <laughs> that just made me so dude that made me want to freaking black out 
<laughs> Holy <laughs> hell, that was bad. Um, <clears throat> no, but like it's pretty interesting. Like the, the a whale, it's just a mammoth, and it's all because they get that big because uh, they're in the ocean in buoyancy. That's why they get so big. What the ambergris or the whale? Both. <laughs> okay. Okay, Whales baby. Big, I know dude. what you mean. I know Whales what you mean. Big. Like you couldn't fit a whale in your apartment. <laughs> Think about that. Uh, I got a pretty big apartment. I assure you, you could not fit a whale in your apartment. <laughs> you couldn't fit a whale in your house. I fit, a, I fit a whale under my bed. <laughs> I don't think you could. I really don't think you could. I'm going to find out right now. They're bigger How than big is whale? Full How gold. big? For gro- for, uh, let's let's do a humpback whale. Let's go for the biggest of them all. Ours cool. is a blue whale. I think it's humpback, but it might be blue. No, it's it's those long ones with the ridges. <laughs> what? A how big is, how big is humpback back? <laughs> Put too many backs. Hold on. How big is humpback? Uh, okay, it's sixty six thousand pounds at the biggest, and its length is fifty two pound fifty two feet. To 46 feet, 46 to 52 feet. Scale so, okay. it. Scale that. I am. I'm trying. So, yeah, I don't think length is your issue, though. It's the ceiling that's going to be the no, problem. The length and the and no. the height. I can't have width. Dude, I easily have 40, 46 feet across <laughs> my apartment. What the fuck? That's Dude, not that big. No, you got this all wrong. You got it all wrong. What well are you looking at? Humpback whale, it's 46 feet long or 52 feet. It's That's the male and female size. I, I definitely have. Whale, grown animal. Can it fit in a... But apartments are different sizes. Apartment. Oh, this, this is just a gen, you know general generality. Well, humpback whales can't swallow a human. Here's why, which I actually know why. Their big old head... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, dude, like that, they could probably eat a house with how right. big the the mouth gets, but the little esophagus is like the size of our head. It is. So they mostly just eat the fish because they can slide on right down their gullet. Krill, krill. Yeah, hey guys, welcome to Krill Talk. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> dude. No, uh, no, but humpback. I mean, but they have. You know what their teeth are called? Wood baleen. Oh, nice. It's made of the same thing that our fingernails are made of. Very cool. Hey, what you have to think of the same? Fuck this well to scale stuff. I have to tell you something, though. I might not know feet. All right. I think I do. There uh-huh. is no way the length of a whale wouldn't fit in this apartment. Dude, I will fish. die on this fucking hill. I will die on this hill. If this is correct, I could fit a whale lengthwise in my apartment. Well, to scale. Whale the scale, baby. That's nope, got the name of this one. Whale the scale. Hell, yes. Oh, back dude. to whales. Back to whales again. Okay. Fuck. Well <laughs> to house picture. Fuck it. Let's see what they, what they look like in a house. Joel, you're thinking of like Shamu. I'm thinking about like the big boys. I know, but I don't, I'm not saying that they would fit. I'm just saying lengthwise they would fit. Oh, oh okay. Here's a perfect example. Here's a, here we go. I might have been wrong, but I still think I might be very close to being right. It is a it is approximately the size, height, and length of a school bus. I'm looking yeah, at I it. I told you that. I said they're the right, size right. of a school but bus. Seeing it makes me think I could fit a school bus in here. Yeah. You can't fit so a school bus. So why can't in I fit the? I could. I could fit a school bus in this apartment. Welcome to school, school bus, bus chat, boys. We can pop it up <laughs> in your apartment, and you know, and, anyways, whatever. Hey, no, let's keep talking about whales and buses. I, just, I, mean, I actually I deeply enjoy two books about whales, so I know how I know how big they are. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> funny, but I know a lot about buses, and I can park a bus in here. I know I could. Hold on. It ain't coming through the front door. Well. To house picture. That's what I did, and you're gonna get the bus picture. To spermaceti. <laughs> Head. Head. Spermaceti. <laughs> a great word. I truly believe I could park a school bus in here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to brag, but I have parked school bus in here. 
Cool. Oh, oh man. Oh, dude. I don't. Can we? Can we hit that JWST button for a second? Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Let me see what I can do. Let me see what this. What this. Fucking. Oh, wow. oh, wow. this can do. Oh man! As soon as we get off of here, I'm gonna go watch yeah. that Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. There's a new one. Yeah, and it looks bad. Ass. Yeah, it looks ass, bro. So it. <laughs> Dude. Oh, we're gonna find out how good you are at splicing. I can't. <laughs> I cannot believe I just did that. I am so sorry, dude. No, you, you're fine. Let me tell everybody what just happened because I. I bet we lost the video of me reacting to it. Uh, this, so what right, video? right as I was about to explain how I could definitely fit a school bus in here, Doug decided to turn off the podcast <laughs> because he thought that he could get rid of this podcast and get rid of the proof that a bus could fit in here. And that whales are not as big as we thought they were. And he's working with Big Whale to try to hide the truth. Well, when I tell you what really happened, you're going to be quite impressed. I was trying to put in our chat a picture of a whale with a house on top of it, flying okay. through the flying flying through outer space. Oh wow! Damn it, dude! I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's as good. This is good because it's dude, as good every, as it. everybody's going to be really impressed by how you were managed to splice this together and make it look good. What? I'm just going <laughs> to put them side by side. I know. I'm joking. That was, I honestly, dude, I think we have come so far because back in the day, that would have killed our mood and we would have started over at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Well, also, we talk about all the time. Our gear used to be freaking ratchet, dude. Right. So, well, so. I was listening to Accelerated Readers yesterday. That's right, customers. I listen to the podcast from time to time myself. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we were talking about, uh, you were saying how you just found that laptop. It really can't be stressed enough how, like, sh what, what haberdash this entire fucking production was and still is. Uh, we had a glass table that my legs were smashed under and Joel would just be shaking. It was a torture chamber. It really was. Uh, so one last thing on whales, and then we can move on. Uh, I'm looking at a size comparison chart here for different whales. And you're, you're right. You're right, man. They, they vary in the size and shape. Yeah, they certainly do. They certainly do. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We were wrong. The biggest whale is a blue whale. Blue whale. Not, okay. here's, the, here's, the, here's the funny thing. A humpback is the third biggest whale. And we, we were number two is sperm whale. Oh, shit. Yeah. So we really should have been looking up. Blue whale. This is a blue whale. Right, so we will do that now because it is considerably larger than the third picture on this chart. Sure. And then just because they wanted to make sure we knew how insignificant we are, they put a human next to it. And it is, I mean, it's a very small it's, human. It's upsetting. It's, Dude, it's, it's wild. Like, uh, you know, like everybody, when anybody like uh, inti uh, intimidates, is anybody, um, what's that called? Impersonates? Uh huh. As an impersonation of Jerry Seinfeld, it's always like, what's the deal with cheese? Or like, what's the deal with clothes? Or what's the deal with fans? You know, they just we keep going round and round and round. Week's episode. We both did that on last week's episode. I know, but like every time it's like, dude, it's everybody has the same exact one. But then you watch Seinfeld in a stand, it's like, that's really what it's because that's what he does. It's so yeah. bizarre. I yeah. just like, like, you know, it, it's like a character. Uh, 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 what's that called? A caricature of him, but he's like kind of a caricature of himself because he really does that. Dude, the thing, the craziest shit about him, look, and this is coming awesome. from some, it's yeah, hilarious. Coming from someone who is a massive fan of his. Yeah. You have to take him at, I think, I think our parents were able to appreciate the comedy. Probably, they were probably the last age group that could appreciate Seinfeld's comedy just for the jokes. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, he's right about that, bro! Airline food! But we, like, grew up with a completely different kind of comedy. So I deeply enjoy his comedy, but I watch it through the lens of, like, some kind of a different style of comedy that only works when he does it. You feel me? Because, like, he just, he did that, he just, so many times has done these, like, uh, these stand-up specials that he hypes up, and I'm like, man, this time it'll be maybe we're, we're going to hear some modern, some modern Jerry jokes. You know, we're going to yeah. finally hear his take on modern life, and then it's just all the old jokes again, and he does it like a Broadway show, and it's like I get what you're doing; it makes sense. But uh, 
he did that Netflix one a couple of years ago. And it was so weird because it was like half new shit that was like felt more edgy and felt a lot more in line with like modern comedy sandwiched with just the oldest weirdest like most corny jokes and it, like oh, yeah. i couldn't i could not get through it i was just like i love seinfeld but man his shit is like well he doesn't have to do it anymore you know what i mean i know like, and well that's another he thing he, out of it. he feels so unattainably famous like when he gets on stage it's like you know, I enjoy the Larry King interview where he's like, do you know who I am? Like, I enjoy those moments he has, but like, yeah, yeah. he's not joking. He's fucking nasty rich and just nasty famous and like doesn't care at, at all to make us like, to, what, he, what is dance for me, clown? He doesn't fucking care anymore. He's like, yeah. I don't need to dance for you anymore. It's just so weird. It's good for him. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, thanks for coming to my Seinfeld whale bus show. <laughs> Can a whale fit in a house? Tune in hey, now. What's the Next deal with clip? houses? So I did pull up how big a blue whale is. Okay. Okay. They are uh, between. So if we if we can remember, the humpback whale was between forty and sixty thousand pounds. Right. That's what we said. Yeah. The blue whale, Douglas, two hundred and ninety to three hundred and thirty thousand pounds. Okay. It, it, it's 29 meters long meters to feet to 29 meters yep 29 meters is 95 feet long so that's <laughs> definitely bigger than my apartment that's the length of a, By a lot <laughs> that's a very big very big fucking animal uh and just completely dwarfs 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 the uh, humpback whale um it's yeah, so weird. crazy like, whales man like a blue whale it's like this is the biggest animal on the planet what's it called a blue, blue whale, whale. <laughs> i call it the blue whale it's like, uh, huh. and what's the second one called a sperm whale it's like what the fuck it's like not hear that? And, uh, huh? hey customers can y'all hear that i don't hear anything you don't hear a low deep rumble no no okay what's going on my, my upstairs neighbors have the two loudest fucking mustangs and they just rev them up in all their 23 year old glory and fucking like, you got cat or amanda has cats or whatever and i've like mm -hmm. never been a cat person but i really like these cats and i'm always like you sound like little motorcycles <laughs> <laughs> not that i burned and it's like y'all purr a loud why are they purring so loud Is there, are they okay it's like they're cats I'm like oh Hey, let's talk about some some bad TV for a second. <laughs> sure. Um, we still got to do our James Webb Space Telescope update. I got it all pulled up. We can hit that in a little bit. Um, so I don't know um, if anybody who listens was a fan of How I Met Your Mother, but How I Met Your Father is out, and it's fucking terrible. It oh. is just deeply bad. <laughs> Uh -huh. That's it. Cool. I finally started seeing the uh, episode, or uh, excuse me, the trailers for uh, Bel Air. I oh, yeah, that's out. Good. I bet you it's, it's out. Good. I'm not going to watch it. Why? I am going to watch it. Why? I, dude, it looks just, I just not at all what I want. Just not what I want. I it's like, dude, I, is that what I'm I just want. saying. I'm just saying it, it's probably not, it's, it's not, I don't know, man. I love Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. This is probably the one where I'm going to be like, nah, I'm cool with the original just because it already tackled like serious issues. And, and I thought it did it very well, like for a 90s sitcom. I don't know. Sure. It's just weird. It's that. Sh okay. Here's my thing. Here's my real thing with it. This, this show could be called fucking anything from the looks of it. They just use the characters names and the locations and the plot, right? Yeah, which the plot is not like something that's extreme. Dude moves from the inner city to the city and has to, or, or to the hills and has to fucking like it's like a fish out of water story. Like, dude, none of this is very original. But it's like Fresh Prince of Bel Air wasn't so much about the story; it was about Will Smith. Yeah, it was Will. See, the fucking character's name is Will. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's about him and his best friend, who was his best friend in real life, and they're yeah. hijinking. It, dude, there's just it, it. To me, it's like. If you tried to redo a, uh, what's a, what's a, like Titus, but you had someone else play Titus 
it just it's it's about the character it's about the comedian who I made just, the character to me <clears throat> titus made an appearance as the I don't host know why i use titus as an example the game show featuring Gosh. the stars of pawn stars you know what i'm talking about i do and i do not know why the fuck my brain went to titus i guess a better example would be like seinfeld i was trying to think of somebody else who has their name in the show and i went with titus so i watched a lot of those episodes of pornography i think that's what it's called i think i've only seen one and like when every time titus would be like and don't you change that channel we'll be right back for the next round of pornography he'd always just like shadow box the camera like, that's dope though dude that's like, probably why they let like, him come back they were like we like, we love the way you box bro like, what are we watching again it's like <laughs> pornography a game show where you, you challenge the the stars of pawn stars to trivial questions and potentially win their get gifts and prizes that they have in their own pawn shop fantastic hell what? yeah and titus is a shadow boxer dude let's okay so i want to stay on titus for a second just because you know what this makes me think and I, i've wondered about this before dude when we were growing up there was a group of comedians that felt like the edgy like and, and for everyone like please remember in the 90s like edgy was a completely different idea it was a completely different thing and like it likely would not be very fucking acceptable today but like back then that was like kind of the counterculture was this edgy humor that was like not tv friendly and shit and there was a few fucking comedians that fell in there and as a kid Growing up, I always felt like they must be like the really smart, popular comedians, like like your George Carlin's or your fucking Bill Hicks. You know what I mean? Like I compared yeah. these dudes to them in my mind, and it was Jay Moore, Christopher Titus, Norm Macdonald, Dennis and the Leary. only and Dennis Leary. I'm saying Norm Macdonald. The fuck? No, I'm not mean to say Norm Macdonald, but Dennis Leary's one. Who was the other one? Fuck, I can't remember now. But those edgy comedians, uh, Dennis Miller maybe was one of them sure to a lesser extent and uh who was the dude uh, i didn't think i ever even knew who that was as a kid lewis black kind of was one of them too who he just yelled a lot though yeah uh but still like none of those dudes panned out none of them you know that expression comes from panned out no oh gold gold yeah we talked about this before haven't we maybe maybe like they use, um, a, use a pan to but like gold heavier just, than Dirt. I'm just saying, was Christopher Titus not funny? Was Jay Moore not I, funny? It was funny. I never watched this sitcom or anything, but I was also a child. Yeah. It's just weird. It's just weird. Like they were big fucking stars when we were kids. Yeah. And they they don't Moore, exist anymore. Jay Moore in real life, I assure you, even when I was a kid, is like somebody I would never really get along with. Oh no, he seems like a creep. But he made That's, mafia, which I fucking cool. loved as a kid. But he had the biggest crush on Nikki Cox when I was a kid. And he's married to her. I'm looking at a picture of him and Nikki Cox right now. That's so fucking weird that you say that, but you know what it says underneath the picture? Divorced. Yeah. Jay Moore and Nikki Cox finalized their divorce. No, I'm not laughing at your bad fortune, bro, but I'm just like, that's kind of funny. Uh whatever. No, yeah, whatever. Hit that JWST button for us. Fuck! Ah, <laughs> yes. No. Was that it? Yes, that's it. Yes. Update of the James Webb Space Telescope. Update. James Webb Space Oh, I never told you what the Morris code message says. Did you not? Did we not finish that conversation? No. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another uh, segment of the James Webb Space Telescope update. The $10 billion project that has taken years um, and $10 billion could really go a long way here on Earth, but we decided to launch it out into the middle of our realm of existence. I muted space. myself. And I know. And then also, uh, we still didn't know if it was going to work, but luckily it has. But we really don't know. This could all just be, you know, nobody's out there checking on it. But, you know, it's got- going to work. It's going to work. But we have big news this week. So I'll start. But with that said, I'm really a fan of the James Webb Space Telescope because I do want to see what it can produce, even though it's going to all hell is going to break loose when they say that they found God and it was a big bang 
a billion years ago. But apparently some scientists are saying it's not a big man. That's the thing about science, though. We come to find out they all agree and then they all disagree. And next thing you know, like, oh, yeah, that was all wrong in the first place. Then it's like, didn't you finally come to a conclusion? It's like, isn't science a religion as well in a weird sense? And all this funding, funding, all this funding is going to them. And they're like, it's like, dude, like, no, it's like, maybe we should just really take these billions of dollars and put it all into our nation and fix some like uh, feeding hungry children and stuff like that but then you're even thinking like why is money even a thing why does money even exist all right it's a social construct you're right and it's a mental it's a mental slave it's like that's what money does to you bro it's all it does uh anyway so the jwst had a big week this week guiding star well i'm gonna let you tackle that but it took a mirror selfie to show to show mission control that it was working yeah great how are you not excited about that? It took a picture of itself and sent it to NASA, and it's like in all of its glory with this big mirror out, and it's just like, ah, like look at me, world. It's here I a am. Picture of it, dude. That's what I'm saying. It's like our first picture. It's like a couple of dot dots in the sky, like literally, like it was taken from an from an iPhone from my apartment of the sky. It's like, dude. It's like, can't y'all what? just like? So should like y'all you're... wait a little bit longer before y'all start? Do you not know what? what picture I'm talking about? The selfie? Yeah. It ain't a picture of dots in the sky. It's a picture of itself. With it's, its a fucking, picture of itself. I, I texted it to you. It's a picture of itself with its mirrors open. I posted it on, I didn't see it, but I believe he's Instagram. It's as a post on our Instagram. Tight. <laughs> Hold on. God damn. No, I, th- I think I, I did. No, I know what you're talking about. Look. Look at the screen. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's cool. neat. That's it's neat. Cool. Like, it's it's a – we could have taken oh, – I don't know, dude. It's like they could have had a GoPro on it. How many times have I to say that? They, we could have been watching the entire time. they couldn't have a GoPro on it because it would freeze up or burn up. Look at this thing. Right? Look. Yeah, I ain't going to make it in space, bro. That's bro, barely going to make it down 35. No, they can freaking uh, keep a little, little heater on it. And when it got to the point where like, <laughs> it's like, let's knock this thing off and just never see it again, but have all that stuff. It's NASA. You're like, they can't do that. It's like, oh, we can send a $10 billion fucking telescope to Lagrange point two and having its own orbit with, uh, with, a, with, with helium based fuel or whatever, whatever for 10 years, mm-hmm. but we can't have a traveling camera on there just to well, see no. what's going on. Well, I just, I, you I, man, I agree we should, but yes. I don't know why we it's can't, but I guess we can't. But when you say that it has a little heater on it, you know what I picture? A <laughs> GoPro. I, I picture a GoPro, and someone runs up, and it's like, give me all your money, and it pulls out a little gun, and it's like, get back, get back. <laughs> a little heater on it. <laughs> Got a little heater on it. Well, I'm, carrying, I'm carrying a heater. Someone tried to catch the GoPro lacking, but he wasn't. <laughs> no, yeah, but I'm excited to see to see what comes of it for sure. That's no, me too, dude. It, so it locked into its guide star today. Yeah, but I don't know what the star is. I don't have it pulled up, Joel, and I'm kind of uh, nervous to be playing around the internet considering it's... I got it pulled up. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. I got it pulled up. All right. So uh, it's... it's uh, Key pointing instrument, whatever the fuck that means, is working well in testing, according to two space agencies that are involved, but not NASA for some reason. Uh, Looks like in the coming weeks, with the help of the FGS, fuck, now I got to go back and see who they were again. The FGS is the people who I said weren't NASA. They're the Mm -hmm. fine guidance sensor. Oh, fuck me. That's actually (laughs) a thing. Okay, so the fine guidance sensor is made by Honeywell, who you okay. might know as the people who make scanners at fucking jobs. And uh, fans. Yeah, for sure. Man, that's crazy. Honey will be in there, bro. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, so this this sensor is making sure that it stays. The FSG makes sure it stays on the track that it needs to be on, locked into its orbit or whatever. And so far, it is working well. And uh, let's see. It is now going to carefully adjust each mirror to stack the individual segmented views and calibrate the rest of the telescope's optical elements to ultimately create a highly focused image of a single star. Yeah. 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 Any day now, any day now, James Webb. It actually says 
Okay, it doesn't say any time. All right, well, <clears throat> I thought the mirror image thing was pretty cool. Well, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Um, I thought the mirror... Could you hear that? Could you hear that, customers, all that music? No. Fascinating. Okay. Fascinating. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Fascinating. Okay, okay. Dude, the new freaking update on this Mac... Even in the notes pa- notepad or whatever, there's like hyperlink si- situations and stuff now. It's like, dang, it's like freaking MySpace. But anyways, do you want to know what the Morse code says in this? Yes. It says, James Webb is here. James Webb is near. James Webb is far. James Webb is a telescope that costs $10 billion. James Webb Space Telescope is for people I think I know who, I think who knows who can say beep, beep, beep. That's what it says. I love it. Uh, so, Dan... If it takes a lot, customers, for letting us know what that said. If you do, uh, if you do the slow version, the first one I I downloaded, it was like ten minutes long. The fast one that is on there now, the long version, is like two and a half minutes. That's Morris code is not as efficient as you would think it would be. (laughs) Seriously, Morris code, man. You know, I think about Morris code, like, and I and it, or is it Morse code? Or is it Morris? It's Morse. M O R S E. Oh, I was thinking uh, Morris. Sometimes I bad. think. My bad. Oh, my bad. My, my bad, guys. Oh, my <laughs> sometimes bad. I think about Morse code and then I think about checkbooks and then I no. think about. No, don't worry. I'm going somewhere. With this. And I think about like uh, trigonometry and mm-hmm. then I think about like home ec. And then I'm like, man, we don't learn so many things now. <laughs> What the hell is trigonometry? I don't know because they stopped teaching it by the time we were in school. Like who? Some shit our parents it, took, bro. What the fuck what is, is trigonometry? It? No idea, bro. I never even. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't do very well in math. So I just maybe know. It does here's, I remember somebody going, "Yeah, I got to go to trig." Oh yeah, it still exists, man. Guys, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure trigonometry still exists. Isn't oh, it the study of triangles? Yeah, it's the study of uh, sides and angles of triangles. Man, guys, I'm not saying that's not an awesome fucking gig to take if you really like numbers, but man, can you imagine Doug waking up and being like, all I want to do in life is study the way that triangles look? Yeah, it's like, I can't wait to be, I can't wait to study the way a cell phone tower pings to another from a cell phone. Oh, ping. That's ping. all they, that's, I mean, that's all I can really see that, that would happen. They'd be like, I guess somebody, I guess they need a trigonometrist to do things like with the James Webb telescope, I suppose. Oh, wow. This says someone asked, how hard is trigonometry? And the answer says trigonometry is hard because it deliberately makes difficult what is at its heart easy. We know trig is about right angles and right triangles are about the Pythagorean theorem. About the simplest math we can write is when this is the Pythagorean theorem, we're referring to the right isosceles triangle. And whatever. And then the sentence ends. But that feels like that's not the end of the statement. I don't know. I don't, Google. Understand. I don't know. Triangles. I mean, I believe triangles, triangles are real. I've seen them. I have I, seen them. I'm actually looking around right now. I can't see a single triangle right now. Maybe like, I see some like, you know, uh, 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 90 degree angles and stuff like that. And, but I don't see any like triangles in here. Let me ask you a question. What? This is a completely different topic. How do you feel about movie theater popcorn? Love it. Do you, no, but honestly, though, do you still yeah. buy popcorn when you go to the movies? I, I don't know how, if I should answer this. No, I mean, answer it. I, not, this isn't well, like a yeah. trap. I'm just kidding. Yeah, do okay. you? Okay. Yeah. I do too. A long time ago, this is a side, this is an aside of an aside, but a long time ago in LA, we went to Arclight and we were in line for some, for at the concession stand and it was opening night of something. It was jam packed in there. There's mm-hmm. a ton of people. And so like everyone's kind of really close together in line for the concession stand and there's two dudes in front of us in really fucking nice suits like we're like why are you at a movie theater motherfucker you look like you're in the mob yeah and the guy goes the guy looks at his friend and he goes don't get the popcorn never get the fucking popcorn don't ever fucking get the popcorn at the movies and i was like i looked at, at serge and i was like the fuck does, like, like, was, the fuck does he know about the popcorn and for like months i would not get popcorn at the movies i was like something's up with the popcorn bro rich people tell me um <laughs> But so I moved on from that and I love popcorn at the movies now, but okay. And there's a, there was a reason that the movie theater popcorn tastes different than microwave popcorn, right? Yeah. Okay. 
AMC just announced they're going to sell their own popcorn. Okay. What do you think it's going to taste like? Movie theater popcorn or microwave popcorn? What are you talking about? They they've been selling their own popcorn since they've opened. No, I'm so sorry. They're gonna they're gonna release their own brand of microwave popcorn. AMC microwave popcorn. Oh, it tastes like a microwave popcorn. I assure you. That's sad. Because really they're not. Because you're microwaving it. Yeah. You're not. You're not. My parents had one of those things that spun around and popped it, and you put the oil in there and everything. Man, that was next level. That shit was fucking good, and you salt it and butter it yourself. How do you feel about artichokes? I love artichokes. You dip them, you peel them, and dip them in the butter. It's a little leaves. You do that? <laughs> yeah. I love that shit, man. I haven't done it since I was a kid. Customers, what's your favorite exotic food? I really want to know. Is it ambergris? Is it tacos? Ambergris what tacos? Part of the world, <laughs> what part of the world are you from? Maybe it's people. <laughs> Contingency of cannibalism, you know? Yeah, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if we're ever going to get our hands on that book. Oh, shit. I, I'm not using the VPN right now. So, uh, and this is going to be online after I said that. So you can't track me, friends. Uh, let's see. Contingency of cannibalism. I can use Fabe. It's contingency of cannibalism, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Found it. All right. So last week, in case you remember, in case you don't remember, sorry, Doug was talking about a book called Contingency Cannibalism, Super Hardcore Survivalism's Dirty Little Secret, very clearly implying this book uh, is about how to eat for your friends if you, if you need to. Yeah, um, yeah. It is extremely rare. When we last checked on this, we couldn't find a copy on eBay, and the only copy we could find on Amazon was $730. I told Doug about a website called Abe, which is a bookseller's resource to find out how much you can offer on things and resell them for. We couldn't use it because I had a VPN on, so we are back to see it now. Okay, so, <laughs> interestingly enough, the, as a former bookseller, the number one fucking thing we know is that when Amazon has a crazy price, you go to Abe and it, you always just laugh at how ridiculous the Amazon price was, right? Sure. On Abe, the price for this book is $733.15. Damn. So that must be the only copy floating around in the world right now because that is the Amazon copy, and that's not how Abe works. Abe should have a bunch of listings for, like, where this came from and what it sold for before. The but instead, reason, all yeah, it has is this one copy. The only reason I know about this book is when I was going through the sources of In the Heart of the Sea – by Nathaniel Philbrick, he used that as a reference to a lot of his writing about the cannibalism of the men of the ship, the well ship Essex. That's the only yeah. reason I know about it because of reading it because of reading another book. Yeah. You know, what's guess, crazy. What? This is what's very strange. Cause I'm looking at the cover of this thing. And I thought, I thought this last week too, because how old is this book supposed to be? I have no idea, but like at the same time, it's like, I feel like I need to reach out to Nathaniel Philbrick and not talk to him about whaling, but be like, where the fuck did you get this book? Well, so here's the deal. I don't, I don't know why, but I was picturing you, you would think like it must be a really old book, you know? Yeah. Like from the, the old 70s? times. I don't know, because the only copy that exists was published in 1999. Oh, well, yeah. So here's my know. thought now. Here's my thought now. Also, when I was a bookseller, we had to, and this isn't censorship before you all fucking cry about it. There are certain things you can't keep on the shelves, but because we didn't want to censor anything, we still made available and we kept in the back in what a shelf. We don't done want it. Well, we no, so, don't want it. So Maybe we right. fucking, we, we, there are books we, sh we couldn't keep on the shelves for moral reasons, uh -huh. but we didn't want to censor anything. So we kept them available. And if you knew what you were looking for, you could ask for them and we could get them off this shelf that only we could access in the back. Okay. Okay. Most of it was like how to steal someone's identity or <laughs> how to burn down a house or how I mean, to stealing somebody's identity, how to drug people or manipulate people and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very, awful. very morally bad areas, but you don't, you know, bookstores generally don't want to censor shit. So they carry it anyway. Uh, this would be on that shelf because looking at the cover and now the publishing date and seeing that there is no like history of this book online, 
This is a book on how to eat people that came out like 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this book is good. I think this is like on some like serious, like, cause dude, the font, the art, it all looks like a Faces of Death VHS cover. Well, this has a very weird feel to it. Apparently it's like really detailed about proper cannibalism. <sighs> also, oh, wait. Hold on. Bro, hold we can on. See the movie we has had a breakthrough. <laughs> okay. Holding. Oh, god damn it. Okay. Hold, holding, mind. holding on. What? What was the thought? What was your thought? My thought that? was that possibly because I saw who wrote the book, Shigeru Takada. And Is I had this. Oh, you're talking about that French, the 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 cannibal that was. Yeah, I was like, holy shit! Friend. It must be the guy who's still uh, who's out and who talks about eating people all the time. It's not. Think about that. They, they, yeah, the French, uh, the, a Japanese cannibal, and they're like, you know what? We're not even going to take put you in prison for the rest of your life. We're just going to make you leave Japan and send you to wherever else. And he lives in France. Yeah, dude, hit that that Vice documentary on him is so deeply uncomfortable and disturbing. Like, I don't really get bothered by too much, but just the way he just like joyfully recounts all that shit and he's free. And people love that dude. He sells art about eating people. He fucking hasn't learned a lesson. He no. wasn't fucking rehabilitated. We have people who eat people. Out was on like, the streets. There was like some uh, reporter. You could probably look it up, but like he was like thought he was just doing like investigative journalism and like being part and like just like trying to like be polite and be a part of this like experience. And like he ate a piece of brain on camera, a human brain, and it like destroyed his career. This is quite recent. It's like a CNN report, traveling like world world reporter. Put reporter eats brain oh, in camera, destroys career. Uh, Raza Aslan. Yep, him. Uh, right, he looks familiar, he's right? A little bit more, he's a little bit more than a CNN reporter, but I don't know. I just I just remember that happening. I was like, damn, damn. Uh, Raza, Raza, not a, fool. Fan, not a big fan of him, dude. Um, he's, well, he, he's, well, don't worry, not too many people are. He literally ate brain, thinking that it was the right thing to do for his uh invest his his report. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. I deeply, deeply uh, enjoy that he did that and got in trouble for it. What a moron. Oh. Um, oh, uh, sorry. sorry, I didn't know that you knew him personally. No, no, I just think that's of all the people to do something so obviously morally black. You know what I mean? Like that is just as dark as you can get morally. Yeah, oh, and to do it thinking that you're doing the right thing is so nice to me to see that that ended up not happening or to not working out for somebody. Too often people do crazy shit and think they're being virtuous and get away with it. Yeah, and exactly. that just means they're walking around thinking they're virtuous. To not get away with something like that is a nice bit of Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Remember, remember we talked about that. Yeah, we did. I don't necessarily uh, remember when, but I remember us talking about it three episodes ago. Probably the one where I drew us inside of a pussy. <laughs> Ugh, I've been planning on saying that this whole episode, and Why? it didn't feel good because the keyword is shocking. I want to be shocking. I want to be the Howard Stern of not racist podcast. Yeah. (laughs) How did he make whatever? Yeah. I don't know, bro. When I watched that video of him and uh, uh, Jefferson, I am so fucking uncomfortable, but I've watched like, I don't know how the fuck anybody got away with that. You would never get away with that now. Whatever, not our problem. Not our not, not my our, fucking problem. Not my fucking problem. Not our chair. We're not worried about it. We're not. Hey, whatever. Not my chair. Not my problem. Hey, uh, he hey. is the king of shock. Hey, what are you? What are, what are you? The fucking king of knots. King of tying tying so things. Telling knots. me if Stern gave you a phone call right now and want to talk to you. I can't talk to you. I talk to him. I talk to anybody, bro. The fuck do you think this is? This is like you think you. I'll talk to anybody, bro. I might tell you how fucking terrible person you are, but I'm gonna talk to you, dude. Um, I wouldn't on. tell him that though. I'd ask him for some cash. Okay, Let me Mr. get some cash. Mr. Stern, you're a good Mr. Guy. Stern, can I get some cash? <laughs> can I get a little bit of cash money? Oh, what do you think Wilmer Wilmer Wil- What do you think Wilmer Valderrama is doing right now? Handing out any cash money? Cash Wait, money. Is he okay? No, I just when I say cash money, you don't immediately think of Wilmer Valderrama and your mama being like, and then you could win cash money. Uh-uh. What's your mama? What? Yeah. What's your mama? Oh yeah, is that MTV show like really like the your mama we jokes? We had friends who were on that show. Yeah, dude, that show slapped. He did? Yeah. Ooh. 
you, bro, I'm not going to drop people's names on here. We had a friend who went on there and told, it didn't want to say anything bad because he was on TV. Oh, yeah. So I he told that. all clean jokes. And yeah, that yeah. ended up being his downfall because he could tell some dirty jokes, bro. He could have killed if he would have yeah, just yeah. Said and told the jokes he told us. Dude, uh, <laughs> yo mama. Yeah, that, that's crazy. It's just so crazy how, like, that was just like 10 years ago, not even. And now if you did what? that, everybody would be so offended. That was so much longer than 10 years ago. Really? Doug, Doug, yo. Yo mama jokes are the you, best, dude. You were lost in time if you think yo mama was 10 years ago. <laughs> that show oh. aired in 2006. Yeah, like 10 years ago. 16 years ago, dude. Whatever. That is a long... Dude, man, see, this is like we talked about last week. Fuck time, bro. Fuck time. For the Your longest time... That when she fell, I didn't laugh, but the cry, the sidewalk cracked up. <laughs> Are we finna do some jokes? Let me get some pulled up myself. Let's hit, let's hit some people with some jokes. Yeah. All right, I got you, bro. All right, hey, your mom is so fat if she buys a fur coat, a whole species will become extinct. Your mom is so fat when she skips a meal, the stock market drops. Your mom is so fat she stepped on a scale and it said to be continued. Your mom is so fat it took me two buses and a train to get get on a good side. <laughs> that one's stupid. That's awesome. That your mom is so. Your mom is so stupid it took her two hours to watch 60 Minutes. Yo, that one is old. <laughs> I used to say that one all the time. Your mom is so stupid she got hit by a parked car. Your mom is so fat when she goes camping. <laughs> when your mom is so fat when she goes camping, the bears hide their food. Your mom is so ugly when she was little she had to trick or treat by phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> your mama's so fat. If she buys it, for, oh, you already said that one. Uh, your mama's so fat. She stepped on a scale and it said to be. Wait, which one are you reading? I'm just on ugly now. Okay. Yeah. Your mama's so fat when she wears high heels, she strikes oil. <laughs> These are so dumb. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, what they're supposed to be. Oh, I don't like the poor ones. I'm going to skip the poor ones, bro. We shouldn't be talking about people's class. But your mama's cooking so nasty, she. <laughs> What? what? Your, your mom Hold on, so I'm just gonna read what this says, and I'm gonna let y'all unpack it. All right, yo, mama's cooking so nasty, she flies got together and fixed the hole in the window screen. What the fuck? <laughs> let me say it again. Yo, mama's cooking so nasty, she flies got together and fixed the hole in the window screen. I think you're supposed to say shoe flies. Are they saying like that even the flies are like, yeah. let's fix this hole. I don't want to be yeah. around, man. That one, that the one o. is a little too complex to be throwing out in a your mama battle. <laughs> your mama's your mom like an isosceles triangle. This one is out there. Your Hold mama's on. so God damn it. Don't say yeah. it. Say it. Your mama's so fat. If she was a if she was a Star Wars character, her name would be Admirable. <laughs> Admiral Snack Bar. <laughs> Why, can't, <laughs> Why can't I fucking read? I said I wasn't going to do the poor ones, but your mom is so poor, ducks throw bread at her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or oh, from generation, shit. dude, like with the, your mom and jokes and stuff. That was like just, dude, everybody would have the dumbest ones. Anyways, that was, yeah. that was a nice skip down memory lane. Your mom and jokes. Oh, speaking of uh, reading <laughs> and not being a reader. I uh I, start, I finished uh Killers of the Fire Moon by the way. Did you enjoy it? Do you want to tell us oh, about your yeah. reading? <laughs> Doug's in the reading. If you want to read a book, here's Doug. He'll tell you what to read. With yeah, Doug. So I, I highly recommend Killers of the Flower Moon about the Osage, uh, essentially massacres of the early 1900s, and about <clears throat> essentially the white man and the settler, settlers going out west and finding another way to to take advantage of the native people and realizing if they just uh, killed a bunch, killed certain ones that they would be in some way, be able to inherit their head rights, which means they would have all the rights to the mil minerals on their, on their land that was essentially oil. So 
pretty sad, actually really sad. And it's like, yeah, it's, really, pretty, it's a pretty bleak book. It, it really goes into it. Let's break it all down. And it really goes into the actual, uh, it's more, it's, it's quite investigative and, um, you know, and there's definitely answers. So it's a, it, it, there is like some, like, you're not like, it's not left open-ended. I highly recommend it. Joel, you read it too. Not so. left open-ended. Highly recommend it. Uh, <clears throat> but I did move out. I, cr- I cracked into, uh, so that's Killers of the Fire Moon. Highly recommend it. And I did just start Empire of the Summer Moon because they have it in paperback and I couldn't make my mind up. And so I grabbed it. And so far, it is brutal. Well, after that one, I think you should read Zodiac. Yeah, I will. Because reading it, I think it would be so interesting to read that for the first time, knowing... Did, I can't remember. Did they debunk that they had figured out who that was? I know we yeah, talked about no. it. I don't know. I don't know. I just wanted the guy's picture to be a little bit more grimacing. He just seems like a normal guy, which is see to me that is grimacing though. Like the only time a killer's ever really looked, I mean, without Gacy, because I mean, you paint yourself up to look like anything, it's going to be eerie. But oh, yeah. like the only person yeah, who the only kids though, that's that's not true, right? Well, still though, but like the only the only serial killer that's ever looked like a serial killer to me is the night stalker oh yeah that motherfucker looks you see that shit in your house you i don't give a fuck you're gonna be scared so fucking scared no matter how tough you are that dude looks evil bro he looks Dahmer look pretty evil i don't know man he looked like a person he looked like a some cat you just kick it with that's that's the point albert fish definitely looked like a killer did he oh, i yeah. see i'm not as familiar with him as you are um yeah in case you guys didn't know, Doug's first mixtape was called Albert Fish and the Boys. No, it was not. <laughs> he doesn't look too much of a killer. He lo- oh. oh, okay. Well, I mean, he probably he's definitely you, like, looks like, intimidating. You're looking, it's like you're probably looking into the future and you see yourself because y'all like have the same like bone structure. <laughs> and mustache. Uh, Got it. No, yeah, he's intimidating for sure, but there's just something about the eyes and the smile on on that Night Stalker dude that I'm like, yo, yeah, I would for sure, for sure, that dude's scary as fuck. I would oh, yeah. know. You know, you know what trips me out? You know who? You know what scares me? Pictures of school shooters. They're always so oh, fucking they're scary terrible. looking. Yeah, how dude, does that happen like that, dude? That's what I'm saying. Like they look terrifying. You know, like those kids. I can't every even look at those pictures, I bro. I, I can't. It so uncomfortable. It breaks. So heartbreaking. God. But it's dude, it's even beyond that. Like I get the weirdest scared feeling when they show the pictures of that Adam Lanza dude and his cheeks and his eyes. And I, I freak out when I see that picture. It makes me feel so weird inside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're hitting the 43 minute mark on this one. And I think we were about the 30 minute mark on the other one. So now this is going to be a really long episode. Go for it. What else um, you say? Oh, no, I was just going to I was going to end it on a nice little joke for everybody. Yeah, Let's go. I'm going to bring it back around. How do you follow Will Smith in the snow? How? Follow the Fresh Prince. Click All over right, here if you want to watch last week's episode. Click over there if you want to subscribe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Let's just on. Uh, we're on all the platforms again, so go listen to us too. All right. Woo! Later, dude.